Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a video all about things I wish I'd known before getting a puppy or a dog. We've had Kiki for over six months now. She is a Cavapoo and I feel like we've learned so much. I grew up with a family dog, but it is very different having a dog around you as you're growing up to then owning a dog. And I feel like we've learned so much in the last six months. And I just feel if it's something you're considering, obviously I think most people know it's a massive responsibility, but there's a few other things that I wasn't necessarily expecting that I wanted to share with you guys. So we're gonna talk about cost, we're gonna talk about food, we're gonna talk about training, we're gonna talk about everything. So I hope you really enjoy this video. If you do, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love you to subscribe and I'll also link down below a few other videos that I've made. I made a video about 24 hours with a puppy and also surprising our kids with Kiki as well, which is really adorable. Um, so I'll link those down below. But with all that said, let's get into my 10 tips. So my first tip before you even get a dog is to really do your research in terms of what breed you want to get because every breed is very different. They all have specific personality traits and even health issues that you may want to be aware of or be able to look into. And not only is every breed different, but every puppy has its very own personality as well. So what you really want to do is find the perfect dog for your family, for your setup, because you don't want to say get a dog that requires loads and loads of exercise if you go out to work every day, it has to kind of fit into your life. So for us, we got a Cavapoo. Straight away, we knew we needed a hypoallergenic dog. So it was between a Cavapoo, a Cockapoo, or a Multipoo. And I watched so many YouTube videos about those specific breeds of dogs. And then I decided in the end, actually a Cavapoo would be the perfect fit for our family. But there were things to think about, like her breed can suffer from heart problems. So she was tested before before we actually got her. The next thing to think about is not only is having a dog a huge responsibility, it's also a massive tie in terms of days out or going on holiday and you do have to invest a lot of time into them. So for us, I actually waited for all of my children to start school and then I got her, not only because I was a little bit lonely at home, but also I knew that I had the time to invest in her. I also work from home, so that really does help as well. And we also spoke to family members like my mother-in-law before we got her to just see if having the dog when we go on holiday is something that she would be interested in and she was fully on board so we decided to go for it but even if we were to say go to the zoo one day or have a day out with the kids we have to think about how long we're going to be we have to consider you know getting back for Kiki just to make sure she can get out to the toilet and be fed sorry she's just run off but I was just going to add to that point that if you don't have family around that are able to help and support you with a dog then it might just be worth looking into doggy daycare or a local dog walker that can help you if you need it. The next thing that I wasn't really expecting and that took me by surprise was how much we were stuck in the house for the first month of having a puppy or a dog. We got Kiki when she was eight weeks old, but her vaccinations weren't until she was 12 weeks. So you can't actually take her out for walks until she's fully vaccinated. So we were just kind of stuck at home. Obviously we could take her in the garden, but I wasn't really prepared for like getting a dog and then kind of like being stuck. We also felt like because she was this little baby that we couldn't really leave her for very long so we were either in the house with her or I did have this little like doggy bag that I would carry her out for walks with but then that was tricky because I'd obviously be carrying her but she would want to get down so I just found that first month a bit tricky but I would say that they do grow up really quickly so like soon enough I could walk her and while I did feel stuck in for those early days you do also have to be prepared to be outside for quite a lot of the time with a puppy if you're a toilet training so for us luckily I work from home and I would take her out every 30 minutes or so to see if she would go to the toilet in the garden in. but sometimes I did feel like I was just kind of like strolling around outside like waiting for something to happen and I always had treats in my jacket so how I did it was if she went to the toilet outside I would give her a big fuss and a treat outside and then if she had an accident indoors which will definitely happen in those early days so if you have any rugs or blanket 
pants you like definitely get rid of them for a little bit um, and if she'd had an accident indoors I would just ignore it I'd clean it up wouldn't say anything so she quickly worked out that the treats and everything were happening when she went outside um, and I would actually really recommend bell training my friend told me about this you can get bells on Amazon to hang on your door and then every time you take them out you ding it and then they quickly learn that when you ding the bell then you'll open the door for them let them out and it's great because if if Kiki ever needs to go to the toilet anywhere, if I have that bell on me, so if we go to a friend's house for the day, I can bring the bell, she can ding it if she wants to go to the garden and go to the toilet, and it's worked really, really well. She's back now having a little snooze, uh, but the next one that I wanted to tell you about that I really didn't expect to love, but it's worked out so well for us, is crate training. I actually felt really mean when we ordered her crate before we got her, but every bit of research or reading that I did really recommend to get a crate and honestly it's been amazing it meant that she slept through the night so young it's also her safe haven if my children are ever getting a little bit too much or they have friends over she can just take herself off to her crate and know that nobody's going to come in there and if I pop out for a bit I know that I can put her in the crate and she's not going to get into anything she's very safe in there um, so the day that we got her I actually hid lots of treats in the crate so that every time she went in there to have a look around she was rewarded with treats she'd find them and immediately thought that it was this like fun great place and it's been great for things like we went away for a week recently so we just took the crate to my mother-in-law's house so she had her little home she had the same routine and she slept really well there as well so I would highly recommend it I don't know how long we'll have it for but at the moment she really loves it next up let's talk about food something that I really wasn't expecting is that she is a very very fussy eater again it can depend on breed apparently it's the poodle in her that is well known for being fussy eaters but honestly she turns her nose up at so much food yesterday I even tried to give her a little bit of salmon fillet and she just turned her nose up at it wasn't interested at all I've tried so many different techniques I've tried so many different food subscription boxes and she is not bothered by food which I guess is good that she won't like overeat or anything like that but it can be really frustrating frustrating. Um, I grew up with a Dalmatian that would just eat anything going so it did come as quite a surprise um, but I do like her food subscription box like you can go on put in their breed put in their birthday and then the food will just arrive each month and another thing that I wanted to talk about is chewing. I heard someone say the other day you know I need to get my puppy to stop chewing but it's almost not that you want them to stop chewing you just want them to chew the right things. When you get them they probably will be teething they'll lose all their little like baby shark teeth um, and get their adult ones so I can really recommend yak milk chews they're not messy at all and they would keep her busy for absolutely ages I get great toys that she can chew as well and I also get some chews on Amazon which is what she was eating at the beginning of this video the next thing to know is that dogs get dirty especially if you get them during the winter like we did so after every single walk she needs to pretty much have a bath or a shower. So with the renovation work that we're doing, we're actually having a hot tap run outside so that we'll have an outside shower for her so when we get back from a walk we can quickly hose her down and dry her and then bring her into the house but because of her fluffy blonde hair she gets so muddy and so dirty so again it depends if you have a very short haired dog like my friend has a french bulldog and she says he basically never really gets that muddy or dirty um, so just something to think about also we have to take her to the groomers every three weeks because although it's great that she doesn't shed her hair or anything she does need a haircut and a good wash every three weeks but just if you're very very house proud like just be aware they can get really dirty and I think like bigger breeds can also drool a lot as well so just something to be aware of. And my next tip is to really invest some time and maybe even a little bit of money into training your dog. I'm fully aware that I'm probably gonna have to spend more time for the next two years training her so that we do get this kind of well-balanced well-behaved dog later on. Um, we also got a trainer for only two sessions but he was very honest when he came to our house and helped 
helped us. He said he wasn't training her, he was there to train us. I would also really recommend reading or listening to a book like I did. I read one called Easy Peasy Puppy Squeezy and I learned a lot from that as well. Um, you can also take them to puppy school which is also great because then they get to socialize. But she was so shy and timid as a puppy, I just knew that that wasn't probably the right route for her. But you not only learn so much but it also gave me the confidence to walk her off lead straight away from day one which is really scary um, but the way that our dog trainer told us about it is actually when they're little babies they're more scared so they're more likely to stay with you um, rather than just run off whereas if you wait until they're a little bit older and then you let them off they're more likely to run off so we went somewhere very quiet I had loads of treats in my hand and we just let her off the lead and she's been brilliant we practice it every day pretty much and the hope you know her recall is getting really good now but it is very scary having the confidence I don't think I would have done it without the dog trainer right there with me and another thing that really surprised me was I didn't realize that you would like get a dog or get a puppy and put them on a lead and they have no idea how to walk on a lead they need to be trained how to walk on a lead I kind of thought you get a dog put on a lead off you go but literally she just didn't know what to do at the beginning so yeah definitely take some time train them get some help if you need it next one is a big one let's talk about cost because dogs are not cheap not only do you have to get them in the first place unless you get a rescue dog but then you also need all the stuff for them which of course you can buy second hand but then you also have the monthly running costs of their food their insurance any vet bills I have to deworm her every month I have to to give her a flea treatment every month and she also has grooming costs every month because she's such a diva and no, I'm just kidding but if you do get a hypoallergenic dog that's something else to consider it's definitely worth thinking about if you need a dog walker if you are going to need care for them if you go on holiday etc and for my last point I wanted to end on a positive because although I've talked about cost and training and all of those things she is one of the best things we've ever done after having kids she's such a huge part of this family we are all obsessed with her she brings us so much joy she's always so happy to be with us and to see us um, she's like my little best friend and companion and honestly I am a crazy dog woman now the other day we we're in the park and this other person with a dog that we got chatting to said oh isn't she so like you all blonde and sociable and I felt really proud like, like she's my actual daughter or something honestly I missed her so much when we went on holiday and she's probably the best thing I've ever done for my mental health as well when all of my children started school I was feeling a little bit lonely and actually getting her sort of gave me a purpose again not that I don't have a purpose but you know what I mean I could kind of like I find myself chatting to her throughout the day I just love having her around and in the evenings when we're watching tv she's like cuddled up to us she's honestly the best and I love her so don't let any of the previous points put you off because you won't know how you live without them once you have them. So those are all the tips that I wanted to share with you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any tips of your own. I'd be interested to read those, especially if you have any other fussy eater tips. Um, but yeah, I was hoping she would say goodbye to you guys, but she is so tired. She went for a walk this morning, um, so she's very chill now. But anyway, thanks again, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!